I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's word to you today. Now then, before we go into today's broadcast, with joy in your heart, can we call for that daily bread? Join me right now and say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Expect a miracle today. Praise God. Now, I was talking to you yesterday about something so important. I'm telling you, according to the prophecy of Joel, there is something that must happen on the earth. And as a child of God, you should be looking at the fulfillment of prophecies. So I was, I was sharing with you yesterday about the promise God made to Abraham. And we got talking about the man that appeared to Abraham called Melchizedek. I was telling you yesterday that, you know, there's this theology that is, um, I think is a recent theology. And I've been, I've actually been praying and asking the Lord, because I've heard even trusted ministers talk about this. And I began to say, where did they get this from? I was just praying about it until I found where they got it from, at least most most of them, I found where they got it from. And I took my time to listen and, and read this carefully and put it in the whole um, body of truth according to the scriptures. And I think I realize now, putting things in the whole body of truth, now that's knowledge, okay? But then in taking decision, you have to trust the Spirit of God to guide you. You don't just take a material that you have seen and think that this material is correct. No matter how right it sounds, you must put it through the test of the Spirit of God that is in you and let Him guide you. Because sometimes even the physical materials are not clear, even though they are true. Something can be true, but it's not clear. Now, because it's not clear, you might give a wrong interpretation to that thing that is true. And then later, when you see another side of it, it's still true. But then you realize that it was your interpretation that was wrong. So I was talking to you about Melchizedek and, and people say, oh, he was um, Shem. And others say, oh, he was, um, he was um, a, a physical king. Now... Should be told, I showed you the book of Hebrews chapter 7 yesterday, and that was that that was the conclusion. And this was many years after the writer of Hebrews came to this conclusion that this man had no genealogy. This man had no father, he had no mother. Okay? And then uh, no genealogy, meaning they cannot trace where he came from. Who was his father? Like I said, in those days you can trace every human being that was on the earth. You can all trace them to Noah. Abraham met Noah. Abraham met Shem. Abraham knew Shem. So you see, if Melchizedek was Shem, Abraham would have clearly known that this is Shem. He would have clearly known. And then secondly, they would not have this, the writer of Hebrews will not come and start telling us that, oh, look, this man was, um, he, he had no genealogy. Now take note of that statement. It's a very powerful statement. He had no genealogy. He had no father. He had no mother. None. But then they recognized that he represented something. He was the priest of the Most High God. So he, he represented God. He carried out God's instruction. He, he, he came with the word of the Lord. So they knew him. So Abraham knew that this man had the word of the Lord in his mouth. And then you remember. Now look at, look at some things. Let me clarify this and it will help you. You remember also 
that when Abraham met him, something happened. And I think I should show it to you if we go to the book of Genesis. Careful reading always help. Now, in Genesis chapter 14, from verse 18, it says, Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine, and he was the priest of God Most High, and he blessed him and said, take note now, Blessed be Abram of the Most High. Look at the words he used. Blessed be Abram of the Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. Mm. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hands. And he gave him tithes of all. Now, the king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. But Abraham said unto the king of Sodom, Watch this now. I have raised my hand to the Lord, God most high. Now take note of those words. Now that's one thing in Bible interpretation. Take, observe the use of words. Now Abraham says, I have raised my hand to the Lord, God most high the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will, take not, I will take nothing from a tread of sandal strap and that I will not take anything that is yours. Let's just say you have made Abraham rich. Now, notice the choice of words Abraham used when he met the king of Sodom. They were the same choice of words that Melchizedek used when he met him. So Melchizedek said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and and earth. Okay? Now then, Abraham met the king of Sodom. And he says, I have raised up my hand to the Lord Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. Are you seeing something there? What is this saying? Abraham was, when he met Melchizedek, Something transpired between them. Remember, Melchizedek came to bless Abraham. And remember, he brought two things. He brought bread and wine. Okay? Now, in all the practice, all this practice of tradition that you read in scriptures, you never find anybody dealing with bread and wine. That combination, you never find it. There is no place it is written apart from here. And then when Jesus showed up, he was doing, he is the one that brought that thing again. He brought out wine and bread. And you remember he, he caught a covenant with the, the, with his disciples. And he says, take it. This is my body that was broken for you. Take drink. This is the blood. This is the blood of the new covenant, new, new covenant. Now, Think about it. When did Abraham lift up his hand to the Lord Most High? The words he used was the same words Melchizedek used. That should give you an understanding that it was when he met Melchizedek that he lifted up his hand to the Lord and said, I will not take a shoelace from you. Now, you also remember, it was when he met Melchizedek. Melchizedek blessed him. Melchizedek blessed him. Take note of that. Now, there became this confusion of who was this man. And they came to that conclusion. We could not trace his lineage. We could not trace his father. We could not trace his mother. We could not trace his we had children. But he showed up as a priest. See that now? So who was he? The word of God made flesh. Like Hebrews say, he was like unto the son of God. All right. So now when Melchizedek met Abraham, he was the one that taught Abraham how to tie it to God. So they began the practice of tithing to the Lord as against tithing to men. Now, how do you know this? You find 
the next person according to scriptures that spoke on tithing was Jacob. And who did Jacob promise to give his tithes to? He said to God. Let's, let's look at it. Genesis chapter 28. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me just jump to verse 22. Genesis 28 and verse 22. This is Jacob. He had had an encounter with God. Now he was making his vows to the Lord. So verse 22, chapter 28, book of Genesis. And this stone, which I have set as a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a tent to you. Hmm? Who was Jacob referring to? God. So Jacob knew that you tithe to God. You don't tithe to men. You tithe to God. All right. Now, you go over to the law. When they came out of Egypt, because now tithe, tithe was silent until they came out of Egypt. And then Moses was giving them the law. And I remember in giving them the law, Moses commanded them that all the tithes of the land shall be the Lord's. You see, because there is this notion that people were tithing to human beings. So when you meet an elder, you, it's, it's, it was a normal thing that they do. You know, they read all those things from books. But you see, without revelation, you will not understand these things. So Moses was now commanding the children of Israel that you must tithe. The, all, the, all the tithe of the land are the Lord's. Then in prescribing how to pay the tithe, you can see that Moses said some specific things. Now, the word, the, there is the tithe that you give to uh, to, to the Levites. Now, why the Levites? Because the Levites, they do the service of the Lord. They have no inheritance. So God commanded them to take the tithes from the people. So meaning, because the tithe belongs to God, these are the workers of God. So God commanded them that, look, they can take his property. Now, not all the tithes. There are specific tithes that God, is, Moses instructed them that they must give to the Levites. Now you can study this for yourself. Then also there is the tithe that Moses spoke to them that you must take it out of your house and go to the place where God will name you and your family. You will sit down there and you will eat it. The tithe, yes, Moses told them that. And then also the, there is a third tithe that Moses instructed them about, which is the third year tithe. Now the third year tithe was, he said, this is the way they paid. They, they wait that third year, every three years, they don't tithe anyhow. They keep their tithe till the end of the year. And then at the end of the year, they gather all the tithe and they heap it out, outside their gates. Now, when they say their gates, the, the, the entrance to their compound, they keep it there. Then Moses said, the Levites, the widows, the orphans, and strangers, take note of this four group, Levite, widows, Often strangers, they come there and choose to their food. See, so they come and take. Well, why would they keep it there? They are keeping it there for the Lord. I want you to understand it. They keep it there for the Lord. So they knew that the tithe belongs to God. All right, then. Now, having understood this. I want to take you back to what I was trying to tell you. Now, Abraham, God promised him something. And God says, through your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. That's what God told Abraham. It was a promise. And you see, when God makes a promise, he walks towards it. And that's one thing you must understand about God. He walks towards the fulfillment of his promise. When God has promised you something, every instruction he begins to give to you is instructions that will cause you to walk in that path 
to the fulfillment of that promise. If you don't trace the instructions to the fulfillment of the promises, you may just have walked out of line with God. Yes, that's the truth. So God have said through you, Abraham, I say, I will bless you. I will make your name great and I will bless your seed after you. And in your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So God then instructed Abraham concerning the tithes. Now I'm sharing this. They are connected and I'm going to show you the connection. God instructed Abraham concerning the tithes. Then you remember God had told Abraham, look, your children will be in a foreign land and after 400 years, I'll bring them out and then they will inherit the land. Now they came out of the land. Moses brought them out of the land and then they inherited the land that God spoke. They came out of slavery. You know what I mean? God, Moses began to instruct them about the land that they were in. Then Moses instructed them concerning the tithes. Then you find something happening in that instruction that the tithe was meant for people that God takes full responsibility for. The Levites, the widows, the orphans, and the strangers. Strangers have no inheritance, so they depend on, you understand? So God was concerned about them. Okay, but then this were, was within the Jewish nation. All right, but then God have promised Abraham that in your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So what happened? Jesus came. He died. He shed his blood. And according to Revelation chapter 5, you remember we've been looking at it, where the, the, when Jesus took the book out of the hand of him who sat on the throne, the 24 elders and the beast, they began to worship God and they made a profound statement. He says, you have with your blood redeemed us out of every tribe and out of every nation. So he has gotten us from all the tribes that exist on the earth. And today, because of the blood of Jesus, we have become connected to God. So, why was God focused on that? I tell you, it was because of the promise that he made to Abraham. Get this. Remember, he says, through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So for that to happen, God has to find a way to connect with all the families of the earth. He did that in Christ. Now, by the blood of Jesus, me that is from one little town in River State in Nigeria, I have become connected to Christ. Now, Christ lives in me. Remember Hebrew, um, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29. If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heir according to the promise. Take note of that word. Heir according to to the promise which promise the promise that through you through your seed all the families of the earth will be blessed and blessing the families of the earth simply means taking care all the families of the earth will be taken care of when god says blessing he's talking about taking care of physically now that's what he's talking about physically take care of you so when he says, through the seed of Abraham, all the families of the earth will be blessed. He meant all the families of the earth will be literally taken care of. Today, we are Christ. We are the seed of Abraham. So today, through us, God has wired the whole earth. God has wired every tribe, every tongue. He has wired everywhere. And what is remaining now is the fulfillment of what God spoke and promised Abraham. Now, he promised Abraham, but then his plan was the whole earth. So he told Abraham, through your seed, I'm going to bless all the families of the earth. So, and I said, the blessing means I'm going to take care of all the families of of the earth and today we are the seed of abraham we are connected to every tribe on the face of the earth 
every tribe, whether you know it or you don't know it, the gospel has gone farther than you think. It has entered into places you can never imagine. There are believers in Christ Jesus that exist on in every nation, in every tribe. There are. Oh, the fact that you haven't reached there doesn't mean God have not reached there. God is doing his work while we are doing our work. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My time is up. I'm going to continue on this tomorrow. I need you to follow me closely because this is very, very important. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're doing this thing in our day and we respect you for it, Lord. You will honor your word that you spoke to your servant and friend, Abraham. And we are here to fulfill that promise in our generation. So let your word have free way to manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.